Good morning. Good morning to you all. Wishing you a beautiful Monday morning for this morning's Mind Body Reset webinar. And today we're going to be talking about PMS or covering the topic of PMS. And I've got some notes over here that I'm going to refer to. So if you jump online, let me know how you are, how you're feeling, what's going on. And if you have any questions, I can see myself just popping up over there. And then I will open up on this screen as well because last week I couldn't see the comments on here. I thought I was talking to myself, but I wasn't. So we'll see how we go. Add that over there. So, so beautiful to see you this morning and to be talking about this topic of PMS. And um, I just love when you send questions in and say, Lisa, how do we cope with this? Or how do we, you know, move through this? Um, so keep your questions coming, DM me, pop them in the Facebook group or whatever it is that you see this. And, um, and then we can use those as a basis ongoing because um, it's really beautiful when I'm able to answer your questions and what's going on for you. So today is, uh, as I said, all about PMS. And so the question was looking for tips for PMS or monthly energy, uh, monthly energy slumps. And then someone else added in um, how to predict them uh, and I get blindsided and how to diffuse them. So I thought I would break the, break the cycle down or break PMS down with a few, uh, you know, from a mind-body perspective and a mind-body reset perspective to see if we can have a look at things differently or get a different perspective. Um, but also to get an understanding of us and our body and what our body's trying to say. So looking at the questions in terms of um, you know um, tips for a monthly energy slump the first question so have a pen and paper handy and jot these questions down because I think they're really powerful to help break down what's actually happening so my first question for you would be um, an energy slump is it a bad thing like what what is what is there a problem with actually having an energy slump and where does that problem or that belief actually come from in relation to the energy slump energy slump because i think that um you know living in the society that we do and you know thinking of myself as well it's all about rushing oops i can see something yeah it's updating on my screen here so it's all about um you know, we're all about rushing and doing things as quickly as we can, getting from one thing to the next and having energy all the time. But what if we weren't supposed to have energy all the time? What if when we had PMS and we had those energy slumps that we actually needed that and our body needed that to recover and get the energy that it needed to keep going? And so maybe if we kind of give it a bit of an analogy or maybe two analogies, one being sleep. You know, we can't keep going for days and days and days without sleep because it affects all parts of our body, our mind, our physical body, you know, our cells, our organs, our tissues, and things start to break down. So we can't go without sleep. And we do that as a daily replenishment. What if the PMS energy slump is actually there as a sign for replenishment? Uh, and I'm kind of thinking and my brain's going, Lisa, you've been in this situation before where a practitioner had said, oh, you know, I think maybe when it's that time of the month that, you know, you stop all of your activities, you know, don't do any. I think it was I was I was actually fasting. Um, I was fasting. I think I don't know if it was that time of the month at the same time. But she said, you know, use this period to like just let go of everything and don't do anything. And I thought, what? I have to do things. I have to do things. There's so much to do and I have to do it. I have to do these things. But then as time went on, I started to look at things differently and say, well, actually, you know, we can't keep going. Animals don't keep going. They need to rest. You know, what about athletes as well? So I think I'm going to start to use the concept more and more in terms of looking at our own health and wellness and um, in terms of and our own journey in life, like a bit of a marathon. You know, you prepare for the marathon, you run the marathon, and then you have some, you know, some downtime, and then you prep and you, and you go again. And I guess life's a little bit like that. You need the downtime. You just can't keep running and keep going. So I think that's the first aspect is consider, you know, is the energy slump a bad thing? Um, or is it actually what your body needs? And you know where did that belief or the thought process come through that like I have to I have to move through this energy slump 
um, and I've got to, I have to have more energy. So where does that actually come from? So that's in relation to, well, the energy slump and PMS. The other one is, you know, it's very much about, you know, in the mind, body and resetting is very much about listening to the body. So what is it that your body actually wants? And what is your body actually need? So you might be able to find that through meditation or through tuning into the body to see, okay, I've got this energy slump. What is it that my body wants? What is it that it needs to help and support it, to help it through? I've got this PMS. So that might be something that you can do you know, on your own. You might be able to journal it, um, reflect, do a meditation, tune into your body. Uh, but also it might be that, you know, as with anything, you might need the help, support and guidance of a practitioner to help you because maybe there's parts of you or parts of your body or your mind that don't want to let things go and are not allowing you to see things. Um, so working with someone to help you through that, to identify what it is. Um, and then obviously what it is that you need personally. Um, so really, you know, listening into, tuning into the body, what does it want, what does it need? Another one is essential oils. Now I didn't, um, didn't prepare with my essential oils and bring them over, but I might actually have one here that's really useful, um, that I found useful and um, I've heard some other really, really incredible stories about the doTERRA women's blend. Uh, and it's Clary Calm. It's a monthly blend for women. So things that are in there is like Clary Sage, Lavender, so that's very calming, Bergamot, Cedarwood, Geranium, Fennel, Carrot Seed. Um, and there's a few other little bits in there, but really amazing. So that's the bottle, it's purple. And um, obviously you've got the, um, it's a really unique smell. It's grounding. Um, kind of supportive at the same time and calming. You've got those really earthy smells and flavors, um, such as like your cedar wood. And then you've got those really calming ones like Roman chamomile, I didn't say that one earlier, I think. Roman chamomile, you know, your lang ylang is really grounding. You know, clary sage is a really good one for women's support. So we know that essential oils can help at an emotional level, but also at a physical level as well. Um, Obviously, I, I don't have the details right here to break them down. I've got lots of essential oil technical books um, in terms of the aspects, but really beautiful to help. Um, I find personally with some period pain um, and I've had others um, who have had period pain or, or challenges with mood and have used um, this oil and it's really, really helps balance them out. So some people even uh, recommend using it a few days beforehand. So maybe applying it three days beforehand to then you know get the body supported and in sync uh, so that may be something to consider so that really beautiful clary caramel some of those essential oils especially the lavender and um, the clary sage um, just thinking i might just see if my essential oil book is over here and we'll see maybe from an emotional component with the clary sage Clary Sage. Oops. Uh, hmm. Sure, it's in here. Yeah. Clary Sage. Okay. So Clary Sage. Um, some of the emotions it helps with is open-minded imagination, spiritual discernment. Um, negative emotions it might support is confusion, darkness, disconnection, hopelessness. Bl bl blocked creativity. So this is kind of um, courage to see the truth. Um, it's quite sort of spiritual here about new ideas, new perspectives, a healing crisis, or maybe, you know, a healing crisis being emotional. And obviously this is a hormonal and emotional um, time in terms of going through PMS and maybe clearing creative blocks. Maybe it's about releasing some of those um, those blocks and assisting in developing the gift of discernment um, to expand vision. Um, yeah, so maybe it's helping, it's that time of the year, things are, um, sorry, that time of the year, that time of the month, things might feel a little bit blocked. 
So, and often I guess that's what happens, there's a, this, this big load of emotion um, and that little bit of stuckness. So maybe that might help in that regard. So that is number two um, essential oils. So we've got the well, number three, we've got the energy slumps, talking about that, listening to your body, essential oils. The other one is I did a little bit of, you know, a little bit of Googling and it's what is, what is PMS all about? Um, and so this was from a Victorian health website. Uh, you know, the PMS is a complex condition. Yes, we women are quite complex, aren't we? But I'm not quite sure I would word it that way. It's a complex condition that includes physical and emotional symptoms. And it shows that women with PMS are hypersensitive to their own normal um, cyclic hormones, so progesterone and estrogen during their menstrual cycle. So we've got that hypersensitivity and, and hormones. And then the other research shows that there's brain chemicals such as neurotransmitters, serotonin, uh, and GABA butyric acid also play a role. So anything that might support those, and we know that um, nutrition supports that, lifestyle, um, uh, you know, your, your routines in terms of, you know, your sleep and things. So we know that the general, um, you know, lifestyle, nutrition, tools help and support. But what about if we look at those, um, you know, also then from a energetic perspective or an emotional perspective um, in terms of, so essential oils obviously can help from a hormone perspective and a, and a brain chemistry, you know, even just smelling impacts the brain's olfactory system, the smell part of the brain. So smelling it, applying it can help from a brain chemistry perspective. Essential oils can help from a hormonal perspective. Um, but what else can we do? Of course, we know that we can do some tapping to help with that. But what also comes up is that um, you know, physical and emotional symptoms. So how do we work through and support some of those physical emotional symptoms? As I said, we can do tapping and uh, with your pen and paper handy, maybe jot some of these down because uh, these are some real key emotions um, that are generally associated with PMS. So what you might do is jot them down and when you're having your P going through your PMS and just identify, are there any of these particular emotions going on for you? And then work through a process of being able to clear and process those. So the first one is um, anger, confusion, anxiety, fear, and self-doubt. And I'll just check also if there's any comments or questions going on here. See if I can see, I can't see who's there. So someone's there, I know someone's there. Um, jump in and say hello and let me know that you are here. And uh, if you have any particular questions. Uh, so anger, confusion, anxiety, fear, and self-doubt. See if there's any one of those particular emotions that tend to be stronger for you. Uh, another one is holding back ideas because you believe they will be rejected. So holding back ideas because you feel that they may be rejected. What about not being listened to? So not being listened to. Feeling frustrated, impatient or annoyed. And that it's interesting that frustrated, impatient, and annoyed. You know, maybe I also get a sense of you know the the two people who ask the question. It's you know I've got these monthly energy slumps. What can I do for those? It's that frustration that hello, lovely, I can see you there, see your comment not on my screen here, but on my on my computer. So it's great to see you here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and um, and also if this is resonating. So. Yeah, with the monthly energy slumps, it, it might be in a sense of, oh, I've got these monthly energy slumps and I'm frustrated that this is happening and I'm frustrated this is happening every month. So what would it look like if you weren't frustrated? So maybe your body needs to have these energy slumps to regain its energy, but you know the frustration is a really big emotion about it. And if you were to process that emotion of frustration around the energy slumps, then your body could do what it needed to and you would be okay in accepting of that. Because it's often in the accepting is actually where we get the healing. Uh, and being a type A personality, I'd be like, what? 
no, <laughs> I don't want to accept this. You know, this is, I, I want to have more energy. I want to have this, but this is not what the body and the mind actually want and need. And then the other one is, uh, the other person was, um, you know, I get blindsided and how to diffuse it. So, you know, there's that sense of frustration and impatience and annoyance of what's actually happening for you and in your body and that disconnection between what's happening. So just feel into whether that feels right. Okay, my whole body gets sore. My friend described hers as feeling like she's been hit by a bus during her period. Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, and breaking down those aspects. So um, I guess the way that we work with things um, from a tapping perspective and EFT perspective specifically is like we've got a table. So you've got, you know, the, maybe the table is, I've got all these PMS symptoms um, and it's, it's overwhelming and this is what happens every month. And then under the table, you have each of those legs or each of those aspects. So one of those aspects and the emotions associated with it might be, you know, my whole body's getting sore. Um, you know, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Um, you know, I've had this pain for so long. I'm so frustrated by it. So there's all these different emotions, these thoughts, these previous experiences. Um, and just thinking about it, it's not something that I've actually um, processed. It's just come up now, but um, I've had really, really, really bad period pain from when I started getting my periods when I was about 12, I think. I think I just started year seven at the time. And um, I had excruciating period pain and I have to, the only thing that would, would diminish it was um, Panadol. And it was really, really, it was really traumatic for me. So um, I, I wonder what, you know, the emotional component was to that. But I'm sure there was also a nutritional component because I wasn't eating overly healthy. And then obviously then that hormone component. So yeah, breaking those down, you know, the hormones, the brain component, you know, what can we do with those different layers? But, you know, the emotional pieces are really, really important um, and one of the, the key ones. Uh, so we also know that tapping has evidence to support it in terms of the support of pain. And it's been really incredible to see some clients be able to work with and reduce their pain symptoms um, as a result of doing EFT and tapping. Um, so that obviously is, a, is an option. So other emotions might be feeling trapped, unsafe, blocked, disrespected and unhappy. So trapped, unsafe, blocked, disrespected and unhappy are common ones with PMS. So again, see if any of those resonate. Another one might be feeling inferior. Another one might be denying your feminine energy. And, you know, if I think about it just subconsciously or kind of just as a guessing, I'm like, oh, actually, maybe for me, part of it is de de um, denying my feminine energy because I am quite masculine with things. Um, holding on to past hurts from men. Uh, so, oh, and we have one more. Wanting to be more masculine to which you attribute strength and power. Yeah, there we go. That's the denying feminine energy side, as I, as I was mentioning for me personally. So see when your PMS comes up, whether any of these relate um, and just kind of maybe highlight them or, or mark them down and then work on those aspects. Um, but again, it might be something that is specific to you because we know that with the mind and the body and your symptoms are specific to you and your experiences, your emotions, your past traumas, um, your beliefs, your genetics, all of those things. Mine didn't used to be very noticeable at all. It's only in the last few months that I have been struck by the, the um, irritability and the soreness. Yeah, that's really interesting because, um, again, you know, breaking it down as to um, getting to the root cause of why it's there or, or what's changed. So is it any of that lifestyle, that diet? Is it um, partner? Is it is it there a certain new level of stress there? Um, what is it? So it sounds like there was potentially a trigger um, for you for it to then sort of come about and eventuate and maybe stay and remain and maybe increase because it hasn't been processed. So that's looking at it from an um, emotional and a metaphysical perspective or a meta-health perspective. 
But I also, um, having a look at this um, Victorian health website, uh, it was really interesting because, so I, I've spoken on the emotional side of things, but you can also do some work and, and analysis from a symptom perspective. So you can break each of the symptoms down. And uh, as I said, tapping works for pain. So working on, on some of those pain symptoms. So symptoms might be abdominal pain and bloating, acne, clumsiness, digestive upsets, weight gain, fluid retention, breast tenderness and swelling. That's one of my key ones joint and muscle pain, tiredness, poor sleep, food cravings, headaches, migraines, hot flushes and sweats, increased appetite, sensitivity to sound, light and touch. Um, so it might be that you do um, a process or a tapping process on those aspects. And then from a mood or an emotional perspective, things like the anxiety, the confusion, depression, uh, it's got depression, lower mood, which may include suicidal thoughts. Obviously, if you have suicidal thoughts, then reach out to, um, to some professionals and some helplines. And uh, difficulties concentrating, memory lapses, drop in self-esteem, confidence, leading to social isolation, drop in sexual desire, or sometimes an increase, feelings of loneliness and paranoia, irritability, including angry outbursts, mood swings, and weepiness. So, um, yeah, that's a really good list to actually then break down. So I'll include that in the in the link below. Uh, other factors I say that you know contribute to PMS. You know, so we've spoken about stress. Um, so working on those different emotional layers will help to reduce stress within the body, within the mind, um, the psychological state, poor physical health, being overweight, smoking, family history, and genetics, culture, and social environment. So, you know, even. A government website is is talking about the impact of stress on the body so you know maybe having a think about was there something that was particularly stressful at the time that you started getting these pains you know or maybe it's the pains that are stressful um, and causing you that distress so there's lots of ways to have a look at it and break it down uh, their key suggestions are lifestyle changes and obviously we spoke about some of those dietary modifications so you know reducing your sugar intake you know inflammatory foods alcohol dairy um, grains gluten that impacts the gut and the brain so when we talk about you know chemical changes we know that what we eat and what goes into our gut impacts our brain uh, so that can be really really powerful for helping and supporting um, and making sure that you've got the right, uh, you know, the right nutrient balance, supplements, they've got hormone treatment and other therapies, dietary modifications. So they didn't, they didn't mention the mind body aspect here, did they? Um, oh, we've got some lifestyle changes, exercise, not smoking, caffeine, alcohol, yep, sleep. So we spoke about sleep. Oh, they've got some really great things here. Um, so managing your stress in whatever way works for you. Uh, examples, counseling, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, Tai Chi, meditation, mindfulness, walking or gardening. So we know all of those grounding, all of those things that help and support us. Um, so I'm just finishing off some CBT training, but to be honest with you, it's not one of my favorite techniques because CBT is using the, the brain, it's uh, mindset and behavior change to get results as opposed to top, um, top down approach to healing. Uh, I really like bottom-up approaches. Well, combination of both in terms of what you need, but love those bottom-up approaches that are not overly explored. So things like your um, EFT, NLP, um, SSP, Safe and Sound Protocol, um, brain spotting, uh, they're all those bottom-up approaches and can be really powerful and help to shift things um, really quickly. Uh, yes, yes, agreed about CBT, not my favorite, yeah. Look, CBT is amazing and it has helped so many people and the research to date shows that as one of the gold, um, you know, like the gold standards of, um, you know, helping with mindset and, you know, various conditions and, and anxiety. But there's more and more research coming out uh, about these, I guess, these newer modalities that just don't have the research to support them. Um, and what I found in my own journey is these top-down approaches, you really get stuck in them because you're using the mind and the body to change them. I mean, it is it is very, very powerful, but I was so stuck in, 
in trauma and all of these different experiences that I really struggled with these top-down approaches and you know a lot of my clients feel the same um, a lot of people who have had chronic illness have felt the same and they've tried different modalities that have tried using you know um, and things like mindfulness and meditation and some of those neuroplastic even some of the basic neuroplasticity techniques and just felt like they haven't got anywhere and nothing shifted and they haven't got any better um, so it's not that I don't support them and I don't think that they're amazing tools and techniques they all are it's about working out what's best for you but I find that these other ones um, enable greater shifts and in a greater period of time and and research also shows that in terms of EFT there's some recent research um, uh, EFT against uh, CBT I think it was potentially for anxiety and uh, or and I don't think it was for PTSD in, in relation to this particular study, but it showed the same results in terms of the same outcome and the same reduction in, say, anxiety, um, but the period of time with EFT was reduced significantly versus CBT. Um, okay, so, yeah, so we spoke about those, obviously, counselling, um, which is that talk therapy, top-down, um, CBT top down, Tai Chi is more of that bottom up approach, meditation, a bit of top down, mindfulness top down, walking kind of top down, um, yoga is bottom up, that's a really beautiful bottom up approach, breath work is a bottom up approach um, and can be really powerful. Um, so we've spoken a bit on nutrition and I mentioned the, uh, you know, the sugar, the alcohol, the caffeine plays a really big role. Um, and things that you know support your hormones all of these things help your support support your hormones tapping helps to support your hormones and we know that reduces cortisol the stress hormone so it's one of the most powerful things that you can do um, yeah so there's some suggestions a little bit from a, a meta health perspective or a metaphysical perspective and a mind body perspective to help break some of those concepts down uh, let me know your thoughts if any of those um, emotional components specifically related um, with you or for you um, maybe some of those essential oils you might feel called to use um, another aspect so I kind of spoke about the uh, emotional side uh, and exploring what they are and working with those but another part might be exploring body parts so are there parts of your body that want to give you certain messages and gifts or communicate to you so, you know, is it your uterus? Is it your ovaries? Is it your vagina that wants to give you some messages? Or is it your brain? Or is it your heart? Or is it your hormones uh, that want to give you some messages for help and support? Oh, I can see you on here now. This is wonderful. Uh, uh, how might you use essential oils? Diffuse, topical as well. All of the above. All of the above. So I personally love to put a little bit of essential oil on my wrists. Smelling it is really beautiful and can be really powerful. So just putting on as makeup, breathing it in, putting oil in your hands and rubbing it together. That can be really powerful. And also that then brings you into your body and allows you to, um, to come into that calmer state. So that might shift some energy as well. Uh, so placing your hands, diffusing it is a great option. Topically, obviously right here, the bottom of your feet is really powerful. I personally am not a fan of putting it on my feet because then my feet are really oily and everything gets oily. Another place is on your temples. It's really beautiful. Back of the neck. Um, where else could you put it? Um, you know, on your belly and rub it around. On your back, I get a lot of back pain, a lot of back pain. And I often wake up in the middle of the night, for example, and I put it on my back. And it's one of the, apart from taking you know, things like Panadol, it's, which I, I tend not to do, it's one of the things that just, you know, maybe might take 15, 20 minutes to, to, to settle in and really calms me down. Obviously, that's from a period pain perspective. Um, yeah, so that's really good. Um, this is not a um, one for internal use. Um, this is external use. Um, so let me know if that was hopeful, helpful for the essential oils. So um, as I was saying, we've broken down the emotions. We explored some of those physical symptoms. So you might sort of create a bit of a list of your physical symptoms and work through those and do some sort of tapping on that. And then the other part is, yeah, exploring those different parts of your body. And um, are there certain parts uh, of your body that are trying to give you a message? Um, I think that's it. So to summarise, it is having a look at 
the monthly oh no I think there's some other things actually there was one other thing in terms of the monthly energy slumps and if you were looking for energy I guess I'm kind of drawn to now um, in, in talking to you and sharing this with you is my initial thoughts and feedback is don't share things to go and get some more energy because the body's trying to conserve its energy but maybe one thing is to change to change the energy in the body and change the way the energy is flowing in the body so one way to do that uh, and again possibly from a the whole energy changing the whole energy field but also from a brain perspective and rewiring the brain because you might be in that emotional overwhelm state um, and the brain and the body might not be connected so my suggestion today is the figure eight so however you would like to do the figure eight with your hands together or your hands uh, one at a time or just like you know with your, yeah, one hand going across the body up you can do it at the side, you can do it with your legs. So that just helps to get energy moving and flowing and the energy moving and flowing in the right direction. I'm just kind of intuitively tuning in to see whether there's any other suggestions or guidance in terms of energy. And maybe even just a tapping on the collarbone point to get energy moving and flowing. Because that's such a big point and a big meridian point. Um, so not so much to get, um, yeah, to get a whole heap of energy, but really just to rebalance the energy and maybe just to tune into that energy. Another one that's coming up is um, grounding. You know, lots of grounding and connection with the earth and that kind of, that slowing down. So we actually get replenished from obviously when we rest. So, you know, if you are going through those energy slumps, um, maybe making use of those, not watching television while you don't have a lot of energy um, or doing things, but just re relaxing, going down to the water or to a park or sitting out in the garden and soaking in some sun because that is going to give you, that is going to give you energy and that is going to give you a boost. Um, so let me know if those tips resonate. Um, and I know that Karen's just jumped on, so let me know if you have any questions as well, Karen. Um, yeah, so we've got the energy component we've spoken about, um, the listening to your body and interpreting it, the essential oils, different aspects of supporting the body parts, the emotions, the physical aspect, looking at those, um, the lifestyle changes, um, to see whether that's impacting. You did miss the first half, Karen, but it is going to be available and you can watch it. All good. Uh, you know, the hormonal perspective, you know, what are the things that can help from a hormonal perspective? We know diet, lifestyle, tapping, brain chem uh, chemicals. Let's do some tapping to help change all of that. Lots of suggestions in there. Um, so I'd be really keen to find out what resonates with you, what emotions, what physical aspects, you know, what are those, uh, the suggestions you've been called to, um, that resonate with you that you feel called to do, or maybe it's just called to be during that period of time. Uh, and it might be some kind of mapping that you might do as well. So map out how you're feeling and the different emotions um, throughout the month and see how they're tracking and see if you get a bit of a, bit of a pattern going on there. Um, to identify that you know it might be that you just don't feel right but you're not quite sure what the emotions are um, or if there's reoccurring emotions every month so maybe track what those emotions are on that day or in relation to your cycle and after two or three months you might have a pattern it might be right on this day you know I'm like really sad on this day I'm really depressed or this day I'm you know really angry and then um, and then work out uh, and then break down some of those layers um, with some of those mind-body processes. I think it's probably having time to rest and to reflect on things that take away energy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And as you say that, what I have a sense and feeling of is that, you know, potentially it's also happening because during the other parts of the month, you're using and consuming too much energy 
and taking too much energy away. And so therefore, when you get to that um, cycle and that time of the month, uh, then your body's like, I am so drained. It's kind of like adrenal fatigue um, and that your body then needs to replenish itself. Um, yeah, so that's a really beautiful reflection. Because we don't often think, you know, we think that we can just keep going and going and going or, you know, we, we go for the week and then we have, we, we, we go, go work really hard at this level for the week and then on the weekend we relax. We work really hard and then we relax. But, you know, our hormonal cycle and our body isn't, isn't quite like that. So we kind of do that on the weekends. We do that with our monthly cycles. You know, we do that with different aspects of health. Um, so, you know, maybe this is our this is our weekend you know the, the the pms the symptoms the messages the um the downtime is is that um yeah is that down downtime from the marathon that we run during the month so it's been an absolute pleasure spending time with you lovely ladies again today i hope that you found this talk really useful let me know what aspects you enjoyed the most and what your um, you know, it's all about inspired action. So what, you know, listening to this, what are the inspired action, action steps that you're going to take? What resonates with you? What action are you going to take? Because, um, you know, it's great to listen to these podcasts and webinars and all these talks, but if you don't take that inspired action, then you're going to have the same results. So, um, ladies, what is one thing that you're going to do for yourself? Uh, one inspired action you're going to take for yourself this month. I will stay on and hang about and await your responses. And I'll think of one as well. Okay, so I have mine. And mine is well, it's kind of two things. One is I'm going to apply a little bit more of this beforehand, uh, a few days beforehand, uh, and kind of plan it and map it out. And the other one that I'm going to do is I feel called to just sit with it. So kind of just sit for a few minutes and just sit with, you know, what's happening at that time of the month. And it's not something that I usually do, but I kind of feel called to just like sit in that calmness feel called to do this now so I might jump off after this and do it um, okay so track for patterns I do it for moods but I didn't think to do it for PMS yeah so it can be symptoms and emotions symptoms emotions and maybe if you are gonna do it maybe it's an also an invitation to to add potentially the nutritional and the lifestyle into that as well um, and and obviously that might make it a little bit bigger, but whatever feels right for you and, and you're able to do. Because um, adding that, that um, the food aspect in there might show, oh my gosh, I'm going to coffee and I've got you know this coffee overload or um, I'm using coffee you know to help and support me during that period of time. Yes, very helpful. I, I will think about what hasn't been processed and why these symptoms might appear at this point in my life. Yeah, great. Great. And, you know, obviously there's always the potential to deep dive into that to, um, to find out what's happening. And look, and then the other aspect is, um, you know, there might be some of those hormonal changes um, or whatnot that you'd need to see a practitioner or an integrative doctor for. So obviously I'm not a medical practitioner, um, but I help and support at those other levels. Awesome ladies, it was so beautiful to spend another Monday morning with you. Um, I can't wait to see you next Tuesday. So we've got eight more sleeps until the Mind Body Reset experience. And I've got, um, I think I've got a beautiful topic that, uh, that we're gonna work through and be supportive of. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you have an idea and a topic for next week's talk, let me know. Um, I think one of the, Something's come through a little bit this morning is how do you squeeze everything in and st stay strong? So I've got some ideas on that one, but if you have some ideas for next week, let me know. And also if you feel that, if you know anyone, any friends, family members, 
um, colleagues who you would feel would benefit from the Mind Body Reset um, experiences and membership, then please reach out and share it with them um, because it, it really is important that you know we share this message and these these new ways of of. Healing.